Hello Internet! I'm here with another pet game update, and today I want to add daily rewards to the game, or show you how to do that, rather. Um, so, you, I'm sure you've seen this in games before, but the concept is you can, you know, encourage your players to log in every day by having some daily reward, something they can only get once per day, and so, you know, you've got a little bit of that maybe kind of gross fear of missing out effect going on in your game, you know, it's up to you to decide whether or not that's the kind of mechanic you want in your game. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know, how to be responsible with it. Don't, don't, you know, don't be mean <laughs> with your game mechanics. Don't try to make a horrible Skinner box uh, slot machine game. So, um, but, you know, these are, these are, it's a common mechanic. We're all familiar. You can do it ethically for sure. So, so let's, let's get into it. Um, for anything that you're going to want to track, has the player done this? Uh, we're going to need to save that data somewhere. So, of course, we're going to put it in the database. Uh, if we look at the database very quickly for pet game, or sorry, I should say RPG game. I, I'm already forgetting that I've renamed the project for RPG game. You can make anything. It doesn't have to be a pet game. Um, this is what we got, right? You, we've got your characters. Like in this case, I've got my little guy named Roy. I've got my player. There's a couple ways that you could do this. You could add another column to users, or sorry, players, I should say. And it is like, when is the last time they claimed a reward? And then we would know the date. And if it was a different date than today's date, then, then that would be good. However, um, it is kind of a slippery slope of adding things to the player table. There's a lot of stuff that a player is going to do. And as your, game, as your game grows, you don't want to end up with a table that's got a thousand columns. <laughs> I mean, that's a little excessive, but, but that's not the kind of the path you want to you go down. Um, this is a whole new mechanic for the game, so I think it deserves a whole new table. Um, that's one way to think about it, right? It's, it's totally separate mechanic, um, and, a, and a player isn't required to interact, right? Like, what is the key information required for a player? That's what's in this player table. I mean, even sign up date maybe is a little debatable whether that should be here. Um, but certainly the, this daily reward thing, you know, it's not, a re, it's not a requirement of having an account, so it, it doesn't need to go in this table. So I'm going to make a whole new, new table, um, and if you've seen other videos, for RPG game or previously pet game before, or if you're familiar with Entity Framework, this will look very familiar to you. You can kind of skip through the, the next few minutes, um, but I'm going to walk through creating the table, not through messing around in the database directly, but through code, because RPG game uses a code-first database, as the term Microsoft gives it for um, ASP.NET Core projects, which is what this is under the hood. Don't worry too much about it if it sounds like gobbledygook. Um, but I think an important thing is to, to know is it's Entity Framework, so if you're curious about some of the conventions of working with the database, uh, RPG game is using Entity Framework, and that's something you can Google. It's by Microsoft. It's super popular. There's a ton of information out there. Um, so what I'm doing here is anything crazy within Entity Framework. Very, very kind of typical stuff. So anyway, let's hop into it. Uh, this is going to be for daily rewards. I'm just going to call it daily re reward. Um, and maybe what we should say is like this is if a daily reward was collected, maybe? Daily reward collected. Sure. If you can think of a better name, go for it. Um, this part is a little kind of unique to pet game, or sorry, RPG game. I really need to get in the habit of saying RPG game. Um, but anything that we want to be a table in RPG game, we should give this. We should say, hey, by the way, it is of this type also. It extends RPG game table, and that's what, that's what this is. Um, I, I talk about this in another video, so I won't go too far into it in this video, but just know if you're making a table, go ahead and do that. Um, so in order to know what player this is associated with, we need to have that player ID. All IDs in pet game are long integers, they're longs. That's pretty common. Integers may be more common, um, but I'm going to go for long. And then this is a convenience thing, so I'll throw it in if, to get quick access to the player object to include their name and other things. Uh, you can whatever. I'm, I'm talking too much about this. Is, again, bog standard and framework stuff. The other very important thing we want is the date. When did they do this thing? So um, we're going to say, by the way, it is required. I'm going to go ahead and put that here too. Uh, it's required that you have a player ID associated with this. Um, it's also required that we have the date time, right? These, these fields in the database can't be uh, null or empty or something. You need to know the date time. So we'll say collected on. And actually, we can go ahead and uh, let's see. Yeah, let's let's do this. So sorry. So what am I thinking? So when we make a new 
every the way that this table can work is that every day we're going to go ahead and add a new row for each day that the player collected their reward. There are pros and cons to this. The pro is you, as the designer of the game, uh, will be able to look at the history and see all the things that, that players have collected. Uh, the con is that depending on the kind of stats you're collecting, you might not want the table to just blow up and have bajillions of rows. Um, so you could choose to instead update the collected on. I'm going to go ahead and, and log it. I think for this feature, it's not going to be too crazy. You could delete these over time if you wanted. Um, so I'm going to have one row per every time the player collects. And maybe you won't even show players that on a calendar or keep a streak, right? It's like, oh, you did seven in a row. Uh, maybe we're getting a little more gross with the mechanics there. Um, but, you know, whatever you want to do with this data, if you've got the data, you, you know, you can create more uses. Maybe at first you, you launch and you're like, hey, it's just a one a day thing. And then later on, now that you have been storing this data, you can reward people for getting seven in a row or show them a calendar of all the rewards they got or whatever. So there's a lot of reasons maybe to keep this history. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, so I'll just keep the history, give you the most flexibility. You can decide how you want to expand on the future from there. So that in mind, uh, when you make a new player reward, daily reward collected row, the date can just be set to the current time. I'm, and by setting this default value here, we were not requiring the developer to do it every time. It'll make more sense when we get into the code if, if this is sounding a little wacky. So um, anyway, now we've defined the table. This is all we need, the player and when they collected. And for historical reasons, if you wanted to log what they collected, you might put like, you know, some description here. I won't bother with that. But anyway, this will be enough for, for our purposes. So next step is tell Entity Framework, uh, hey, I need you to actually uh, make a migration, uh, some code to update the database to match what we've done here. So go on the command line. Uh, we are going to say .NET EF migrations add, and we'll say add daily rewards, whatever kind of human readable description you want. Uh, generally good to do this camel casing thing, naming convention. That's the popular convention. So let's not be surprising for Maybe you recruit someone else to help you with your game. Let's use the normal conventions that everyone else is familiar with. I always forget to do this in every single video. I'll never stop forgetting. Um, Got to stop that thing. You can see the moment I stopped uh, the game, it was able to build. I can't build the game while it's running it. So I always forget that. One day I won't forget. All right. Uh, double check. This is why we double check. I've made a small mistake here. Uh, so I should be seeing something here that says, hey, I want to you know, create this new table. That's that's what I'm expecting this code to generate. It failed to do so. The reason is that I forgot to do something. I forgot to tell the database, which is here. Uh, we need to tell it all the tables, right? It's a little unfortunate that RPG game table here, right? You might think, why can't it find it, right? Why isn't it find it? Um, it's possible I can make RPG game a little smarter to auto detect these tables, but right now it doesn't. The real master list of all tables in the database is this. RPG game database. This is what we have to update to tell it, hey, that's the table. Um, and you give it your name here. So this is a daily reward collecteds. <laughs> uh, we'll say daily rewards collected. Uh, speaking of naming conventions, the convention is that the class name is in the singular form and the table name is in the plural form. Right? This table is a collection of players. Each player is one player. So the class name is, is singular and the database name, or sorry, the table name is in the plural. So another, again, other standard convention, you'll see this in a lot of programs on the internet. There's no reason to break convention here, so let's roll with it. Uh, since I messed up my migration, I will delete the bad migration that I made. Um, and let's try that again. Add daily rewards. It should be pretty quick this time. Yep, since it's not running. All right, and then let's go see that here we go. This is what we wanted to see. Create a table called Daily Rewards Collected. It's going to have an ID, a player ID, a collected on. This is all making sense to me. Uh, does some indexes and foreign keys. If that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it too hard. Uh, but we, you know, we can see it's all related to the table we were expecting. So it seems to have done what we wanted. Uh, final thing to do is uh, the step is optional. So never mind. Um, once you have made this migration, it needs to be run to actually update the database. And RPG game is configured such that when you run the thing, it also runs this migration to update the database. So 
So what does that mean? What that means is now when we come here and hit refresh, now we have this new table. Here it is. It's in the database for real. Why did we go through all this trouble of like making a migration command line stuff rather than just coming in here and clicking and saying, hey, give me a new table? Again, I've talked about migrations before and, and uh, code first databases. Um, you can watch a previous video or Google for you know, kind of the advantages. There's a lot of advantages to doing this. And once you get the hang of it, it's not that much work. So I won't dwell on it too much in this video. We now have the table. Let's use it. Uh, so what we, I think I'm going to do is I'll just put, you know, maybe I'll put it here. Or, I don't know. Put it on your house. We'll just throw it on the bottom of the house page or maybe at the top. Um, hey, collect your reward, right? You haven't collected one today. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, how will we know whether or not they've collected a, the reward? Again, we'll look at this table and say, hey, is there for this player and for today's date a row? Can we find a row that matches that, those criteria? If we can't find one, then the player hasn't collected today. So yeah, let's just start there. Let's look for that data. And when we fail to find it, we will show the, um, the little link on top or something. And maybe we'll find an icon. I don't know. Let's find a graphic or something to put there. But but one thing at a time. So on the my house page, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new component to kind of handle this. Like I could throw that all of the like the HTML and all the logic for handling on this page. But this page is gonna get really big if I keep just throwing everything in here. So I'm gonna make a whole new component. There are a few components already in the game. They live in this components folder, and there are things like this character card that renders your your pet or your little hero guy. And there's also this ribbon that's used by the character card. Uh, here it is ribbon. And that just draws one of these. So I split that out into a separate component, partly because, I don't know, there's some stuff to it. But also because I thought, I don't know, maybe you would draw other things with a ribbon. Maybe when you show players, you'd put a ribbon on the player name or items or who knows. I just it felt like the sort of thing that might be reusable. So anything we think might be reusable or we just don't want to muddy one page, you know, get the page too large, we can make a component for it. And maybe if you make other pages in your game, um, like I think there's one video where there's a shop where you can buy more pets. Uh, maybe you would like to put that component on the top of, the, of a lot of those pages. It's like, hey, get your daily reward, you know, so who knows where you want to put it. So I'm going to make a component, plenty of reasons to make a component. And we will call this, um, I don't know, daily reward get daily reward. Hmm. Daily reward getter. I don't know. I'll just call it daily reward. I kind of hesitate because it's not this component doesn't represent an actual reward. It's just going to be like the little button and message. So I don't know daily reward message. I don't know. Again, if you can think of a name that makes more sense, go for it. Um, this is going to need to know the current player. So to get the current player, we ask for the current player. I think it's Sorry, it's been a while. Yep, yep, current player. Current player, and this is just some silly little, I don't know, there's a whole little bit of ceremony here. Um, but this, when you inject this current player object, I'm going to call it current player. It could have been called anything. You can call it P. It's not a great name. You might as well call it what it is. Um, but just to, these are kind of referring to two different things here. Um, this will allow us to get the current player, and we're going to need to know who the current player is to look up hey, is that player you know, the one who, who needs a reward? So we'll get that current player uh, little service class here. And when this component is loaded, which is uninitialized, actually we'll do uninitialized async, given the option, general rule of thumb, just go with the async methods. You're generally going to prefer that. Something I wish it did. We need to also put this keyword in here. I wish it would do that for us automatically, but it doesn't. There's kind of reasons. Uh, topic for another time. Um, yes, so and, and the reason for doing async is we're going to reach out to the database and that can take time. It takes a, a measurable amount of time and we don't want to lag out the whole uh, website while we're doing this other bit of work of this this task of, of talking to the database. So right, that's something else we're going to need. We need to be able to talk to a database. So to do that in RPG game, we ask for a uh, database factory. I forget the exact signature, but I don't have to remember because it's on other pages. So let's see this thing, this fun line, um, a DB factory. So I've also talked about this in other videos. I'm going to do import missing references. Uh, so yeah, so I, I should talk about this. I shouldn't zoom through these things. Um, <laughs> when it shows you in red like this, it's like, I don't know what you've typed, you've typed nonsense. But 
uh, the IDE, in this case writer, is being extra smart and saying, well, underline, you have type nonsense, but I actually can help you out. This isn't total nonsense. We just need to do a little more work. And so uh, you can right click here or click the little idea thing. Import missing references. That's the first suggestion. The first suggestion is usually very good. So why was this nonsense? It just had to know where to find RPG game database. It lives in RPG games database. So we just needed this extra line on top. And the IDE is super smart and was able to figure that out for us. So anyway, I click through those things so quickly. I'm used to doing this. I probably do it three dozen times every day at work. <laughs> I blast through those kinds of things, but I should be taking the time to explain. So anyway, we've got a database factory that will let us get a connection to the database. It should probably more correctly, I should say, database connection factory, whatever. What's a factory? A factory is a thing that makes things, and this thing makes database connections, so I'm calling it a factory here. And this comes from Entity Framework, which we talked about before, and they call it factories. So again, why, I don't know, break that convention. So let's get access to our database. To do that, we ask the database factory to create a connection. That's how. Oh, because that's async, we must await for that asynchronous thing to be done. And then we will say, look at the daily rewards collected. And I would like to find the first one or default. Maybe I don't find one. If you just say first, by the way, if we just say first async and it doesn't find one, it'll crash because it says, you assured me we we're going to find one and we didn't. So if we don't want that to happen. We say first or default, which in this case will be null. We'll get nothing back. So anyway, we want to find the first reward, which I'll just call R here. We want it where the player ID equals. Let's ask the current player what their ID is, which is this little bit. Um, if that looks kind of weird, this is an RPG maker specific thing. I made this current player service, right? This isn't provided by Entity Framework or, or some other Microsoft standard thing. Um, so this just it has this thing on it to get the current player's info. If they're logged in, if they're not logged in, then this gives you null. That's why the question mark. So that's a little thing to learn about RPG maker. Sorry, RPG game, RPG maker is a totally different product, not related, um, and, 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 and which I have no relation to um, other than a sometimes user. Uh, but anyway, if, if this looks weird, you'll have seen this on other pages, right? On my house, um, you can see, uh, right, we're looking for characters where the owner is the player. So anyway, you can learn these things by looking at other bits of code as well, is all I'm saying. So, all right. Uh, but we want to match on two things. We also want to find one where the collected on date equals today. So we can say, just pull off the date portion. There's different ways I could have done this. I kind of regret doing it this way at this point, but it's okay. So we could have told the database, I'm only going to store a date, not a date time, but it's okay. Uh, maybe you want to know, we, we can say, it was on purpose, I promise. We want to know the exact time for statistical, historical reasons, I don't know. Um, so anyway, let's say then we want current time and date. And here's another little detail. So when you're asking date time for the current time, you can just say now, but that's going to be time zoned to uh, your server, but potentially because some of this code runs on the front end. So depending on how you do this date time, it might actually be the your user's time zone. And so to prevent any kind of weird time zone shenanigans from mismatching and, you know, from your server's point of view, it's a different date than from your user's point of view or anything like that. Just use UTC now. And this is again like best practice, widely accepted. Just use UTC time to store everything. Um, universal time, right? Greenwich Mean Time, it's also kind of known as there are subtle differences. Um, but uh, anyway, you just store, just use UTC time. Then you'll have no problems about time zones and people living in different places. So um, yeah, we'll get the current time. And again, we just want to pull off the date element. And, and the reason why we, we want to know that you collected on this given day without caring about what time during the day. And so dot date says, give me the date component of this. Uh, this line got a little long, so I will break it up a little bit here. Um, so this would be um, the whether or not you collected. So we'll say collected daily reward. And because this is asynchronous, we also must await it. If you leave that out, you'll start to get weird squiggly underlines on your code. And you'll be like, like, if we left it off here, then this, suddenly this isn't working anymore because you didn't await. So if you are like, I swear I'm typing this right, maybe you missed an await somewhere, something to look out for. Uh, for these async methods, it's only the async things you need to await these, these tasks. So anyway, all right. So again, what are we trying to do here? 
We want to know if they did collect the reward, we don't really have anything to say. If they didn't collect the reward, then, we, then we're going to say, hey, you can collect your reward. So let's do, we'll make just a Boolean. We'll call it um, can collect daily reward. And we'll set that here, right? When this component initializes, we look it up and we say, okay, you can collect the daily reward if what we found, right? We tried to find a daily reward for the current day. If it was null, then you're good, right? So this is, there's other ways you could write this. A more natural way to write this might be something like this. So let me, a more intuitive way, we would say, then it's true, else it's false. That's another way we could write it. Um, Right, so if the, if we didn't find one, if, if we got nothing back out of the database, then they can collect today. Otherwise, they can't. That's probably an easier way to read that. Um, but another way to do it, a little more succinct, pretty common to see things written that way, is this is either true or false, so we can just assign that to here directly. So I don't know. Pick the one that makes more sense to you, right? I mean, this is maybe cleverer. But if it's harder for you to read, then don't worry about, you know, cleverness is less important than easy for you to read and understand. So go with whatever is easy for you to read and understand. I'll leave it this way. But now you know, you can make your own choice there. Um, okay, so now we can get up here back in the part, you know, we used to have some HTML here. We actually only, only want to show that HTML if they can collect the daily reward, then we would show something. So let's say, get your reward. And then we'll have a button. Uh, and actually, maybe this whole thing should just be the button, really. So get your reward, and then we'll say on click, we're going to call some function when they click this thing, and we'll call it get reward. Makes sense. And we need to define that function down here. Um, and it's generally best practice to make these things asynchronous tasks, as mentioned. And by the way, so I mentioned before, right? If these things are async, if they say async in the name, you know you need to await. Well, it's not because async is in the name, it's because of this part, because async is here. But if you like to know, if you want to follow that convention of async methods have async in the name to make it easy for you to tell, feel free to do that too. Maybe it's better to call this get a reward async. Um, that is why Microsoft has chosen to do this, to let you, the reader, know. So maybe it's nice for you to do that in your own code as well. I don't usually bother. There's enough clues, I think, for me and co-workers generally agree, but you know, that's because we've seen it a lot of times. So again, do what makes the code um, make sense to you. So get reward async. Okay, we've done a lot of coding. Let's actually test that this works so far, um, right? We're expecting that we do see this button. It's not hooked up to do anything, but we would like to see it. Um, we won't see it quite yet. We need to go back to my house. And again, up here at the top, I'm gonna put this uh, daily reward, this new daily reward component that I made. Um, this, by default, the IDE is going to fill in with this. If you know you don't want anything inside, you can just format it like this and save, I don't know, saves a little bit of space. This is also pretty standard HTML. If you've done a lot of HTML, you've seen this kind of style of writing a tag before. So it's called a self-closing tag, something else you can Google. Uh, let's rerun the game and see that it looks right. Uh, we should see a little link on top that says, oh my gosh, collect your reward. So load, load, load. And close these extra tabs. All right, get your reward. Again, clicking on it doesn't do anything, but we suspect it works. All right, we, I guess we don't really know. Maybe it's not looking up data here. We wouldn't be able to tell because there's none here, but I don't know. The code seems pretty reasonable, and we'll soon find out. If we're accidentally looking this data up wrong, we're going to find out because now we're going to make it so that you click get your reward, and you get your reward. <laughs> so let's do that. Go back to the daily reward code. I can minimize this. And we're going to put some extra code in this get reward async. So I think we're going to want to do a couple other things. So something I've mentioned before um, in another video, it is possible that someone has two tabs. Let's go ahead and do that. And they click get your reward here. And the button says, yeah, you're allowed to get your reward. Got it. It goes away. But then on this tab, it's not going to know. These, these the browser tabs don't just freely communicate with each other. I mean, imagine if one tab was allowed to just look at another tab on your website, on your browser, and start reading stuff or whatever, right? That would be bad. Um, so tabs don't talk to each other. There are weird, special, crazy things you can do. With, don't worry about it. Um, we're not going to go there in, in today's video. Um, progressive web apps and all sorts of fun things. But anyway, um, generally speaking, tabs aren't talking to each other. They're not allowed to, unless you set up some other stuff to 
allow tabs to talk to her. Oh, I almost regret having brought it up, but I don't want to lie to you and say it never ever happens. There are, you can make it happen, but RPG games not set up for that. So we want to prevent a case where you click a reward here, you go over to this tab, and then you do it again. Um, what that means is this page just says you can only click on this if you can collect the daily reward, which we know because we looked in the database. But I want to do that check again in this function to make sure that someone's not opening a bunch of tabs and getting daily rewards 20 times, right, and cheating your game. We're going to check again when they click and make super duper sure. So let's copy this, copy paste this. Um, if we don't like copy pasting this, we could break this out into another function. It's not a bad idea. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste that. And we're going to do the same thing. So we'll say if the collected daily reward, and we're going to we're going to do instead, we're going to say if it isn't null, right? If we did find something for the current date, um, then we're going to set this to false to clear it, and we're going to get out of here. Um, so this, we're being a little extra nice on this page. You could just say, just get out of here and not do anything. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do. You could, you could show an alert, like show a message and be like, hey, you already collected it today. Um, we have a dialogue that pops up an alert like that. So I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can see how this alert dialogue is used in other parts of the page. And maybe you want to be extra nice and be like, oh, sorry, you can't collect today. You must have been looking at an old copy of the page. You know, whatever. You could be nice like that if you wanted. I'm not going to bother, but what I will bother to do at least is turn off the can collect daily reward. So we'll click it and the button will just go away. And we'll we'll test that out. We'll test out that it works. Um, but if everything's okay, we've looked at the database, we've concluded that they indeed have not collected the reward, right? We didn't find anything, then let's give them the reward. This is something else that I'm gonna kind of leave up to you to decide what should that reward be. Um, the main reason, honestly, being is that RPG game as a base doesn't have anything to really give the player. Um, you, maybe we can give your pet experience or something. I don't know. But if you looked at other videos of mine, um, I also have a, a written tutorial in the readme for the project for how to add inventory to the game. Uh, there's a video for adding money to the game. Uh, there's a video for showing how you might recruit more pets. So you, if you've followed any of the, those other videos, this is a great thing to combine in, right? It's like, oh, I have items in the game. Okay, I'm going to give them a random item. And if you followed along with those videos, you, you probably have a great idea. Oh, I know how to give someone an item. I know how to give someone another pet. I know how to give someone money, right? So whatever you want the reward to be, give, give the player the reward. That's what you're going to put in here. I'm not going to do that in this video, which is, I don't know, I feel a little weird doing that. Um, but I think it's more important that these videos kind of be able to stand alone for you to mix and match how, how you want. So um, yeah, unfortunately, this video, <laughs> daily rewards, you're going to have to do a little extra work. But here we've got the skeleton for it. Let's do the rest of the reward thing. The rest of the reward thing is now we need to log. Hey, they collected it. So we're convinced that there isn't one in the database. Good. Now we're going to add a record um, for, you know, record the fact that they have got that. Sorry, that's my email. I don't know if you heard that. Bing, boo, boo, whatever. All right. So let's make a new um, record in the database. And we can do this. We can do this a couple ways. I'll, I should do this more kind of easy to read way. So let's say, um, I don't know, new reward record. I don't know. So we're going to make a new daily rewards collected. And we need to give it a player ID. That's going to be the current player. And we saw we got that. And we're going to get the date. So the collected on. Um, and actually, so this is the part where I was saying it'll make sense when we get there. We don't have to do that part because if we recall, it automatically populates the collected on to the current date time. So you don't even need to do that. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to close tabs. All right, so we can just do that and leave it at that. Here's the player. It's going to assign the date time for us already to the current date, right? We can't mess that up. Um, let's now add that to the database. We just say database. Here is this new thing. Please save it. And then we save. And uh, DB, save changes async. There it is. It's async. I knew it was going to be, so I did a wait. And finally, we can say can collect daily reward. No, we have now collected it. You can't do that anymore. Something else I would like to do, though, we're going to give them re the reward. I would like to pop up an alert. I'll at least pop up an alert, even though we're not giving them anything in this video. Again, I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, we can at least show an alert. So let's look at how my house, because it does pop up alerts, how it does it. So it says alert.show, passes in modals. Okay, well, what's modals? A, a blue thing is something that was 
defined of this light blue color something that was defined somewhere in this in this class so we can go up and find it here it is modals all right so apparently you're going to need this modals thing um if it doesn't make a ton of sense don't worry about it it's something i pretty sure i talk about that in another video um sorry quick click on random tabs here's the right tab so this is the doodle that lets us open up modals. We need this modal service. This, by the way, is provided, I know I've talked about this before, there is a package called Blazard Modal. It's, I didn't write this, it's a popular uh, library that exists out there, open source for doing modals within a Blazor application, which is, Blazor is the technology that's kind of running this website. It's another Microsoft thing for making websites. So uh, yeah, there's a, there's a decent-ish ecosystem around Blazor. There's a lot of libraries out there. So if you search for Blazor libraries, you'll find things like this modal one for popping up modals. So, so anyway, that's what um, RPG game has built into it. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can say alert. Uh, and I pressed enter there. That was kind of cheating. Uh, let me try that again, but in a way where I don't hide what I'm doing. So alert dot. Um, never mind. I figured it out anyway. So... <laughs> what I was saying, we need this using RPG game dialogues because RPG game dialogues alert. But again, the IDE is being really nice and auto completing that for us. So there's a little extra magic happening. I was trying to show that more clearly, but it seems like it just does it. Great. Um, so we need to pass in the modal. Let's type comma and see. All right. If you pause for a second, we'll show you what, what do we need. We need a modals title and message. It builds what we're currently on. We're on title. So let's get the title. Uh, we'll say. I don't know, daily reward, and then what's the message? Um, neat, you got something. I don't know what it's going to be. I'll just leave it at that. I'll, again, depending on what you give to the player, I'm going to have to leave it to you to describe what that is. Um, you'd probably do some random thing. Um, you know, some random number generator. Figure out what you want to get them. Um, maybe there's, maybe I should do a, a video about loot tables or something someday. Um, but by some logic, find the thing you want to reward them with, give them that thing, tell them what it is, save the record, put it in a database, and then we'll clear this, this thing. So having done all that, let's see. I think I can just click apply changes now. It'll work. So let's try this out. Let's try to break the game. So I have it. I'm going to refresh just to make super duper sure we're on the latest code. And I'm going to get a reward. Okay. I think I just need to restart. I think, I think apply changes just isn't going to work. I always try to do it. This is not going to work. All right, so refresh, refresh, go to my house, go to my house, get your reward. All right, neat, you got something, okay, and it went away. And if I refresh here, it's not going to show it to me again. Great. On this tab, it does, it does still show it, but if I click it, I didn't get the reward. So everything is working. It is correctly, right? Double checked. Oh, nope, you already got the daily reward. I can't show it to you. So <laughs> go away and <laughs> clear the button. If we refresh here, we should see that we now have a new record saying that we collected and let's test it let's say that actually i collected this yesterday i'll just move the date back so now and yeah you do have to click outside if you see that saw that little red triangle and by the way this is heidi sql i've talked about in other videos it's an open source database viewer thing um when it shows a little red triangle that means you've changed the value but i haven't saved it yet so you need to click outside now it's saved the database now believes that the last time you collected on was yesterday so when i come in here and reload I can get my reward again. Great, neat, you got something. And now if we go over here, now we have two records for yesterday, quote unquote, hacked yesterday and today. So perfect, that's that's it. That's kind of the basis for doing a daily reward system. Log when people got it. I mean, the, the very the concept is, is, is pretty straightforward. Just log every day that they collected, got it. Um, there's all these little funny implementation details, making sure that people aren't cheating, you know, with multiple tabs, be careful. Always, always assume that if players can cheat your game, they're going to find out eventually. So, so think about that and make sure you're double checking. Um, and, uh, but beyond that, we've got it. And now again, up to you to figure out the reward to give the player based on what else you've added in the game. Um, so there you go. End of video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I will, there's, there's a link, but it may be on the screen right now to a playlist with all the other videos. So if you haven't seen things on how to add breeding or monies or stores to the game, check out that playlist and you, you can find the videos that show you how to do that. Um, I mentioned before in this video that RPG game used to be called pet game and I did change the code a little bit. So depending on when you're watching this, if, if, if you 
if this video is very recent, most of the videos in the playlist are going to be pet game. Um, and there will be a little bit of adapting you need to do on the code. Not a lot. It's mostly changes to things like character card was called pet card because I was thinking more of this thing as being for pet games. But I tried to change some of the language to be like, no, 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 this is any kind of role playing game kind of thing you want. Um, so, but, but the code should be mostly the same. So, so don't be too afraid. Just know that you might have to translate one or two things as you, as you follow along. Um, but other than that, thank you very much. If you've got suggestions on things you would like, uh, other videos, I mentioned loot tables, you know, uh, any other ideas like that, definitely let me know. Um, any other questions, throw them in the comments. I had a question on a previous video, happy to answer them. You know, why did I do this or that in the code or, or other things like that? Or, or if anything seemed confusing, uh, definitely throw in a comment. I'm, I'm happy to explain those things. And that is it for now. Thank you again. Goodbye.